Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Ahu here with KissAnalog.com. Today, I want to talk about logarithms, the decibel. What's all this dB stuff about? Why do we use it? Is it just complicating things? Why can't we just graph linearly, you know, volts and time or frequency? Why do we have to put these things in log graphs? I mean, doesn't that just complicate things, right? It's extra math. You can't do that in your head. you got to use a calculator to figure out the logs. Well, maybe some of it you kind of actually can do it in your head, or you can kind of get a close number at least. So let's just get a good feel for what that looks like, okay? And first of all, let me explain a little bit more about why we use logs. We like to look at Bode diagrams, you know, for filters and, you know, for amplifiers, things like that, right? So we like to see the roll off of a filter, a uh, bandpass filter maybe. Maybe in an amplifier, the signal you want to put in, maybe you don't want to put DC signal in because you don't want to destroy your speakers. So you uh, roll off the frequencies of the low frequencies. Low frequencies, you don't pass them through your amplifier and you roll it up. So say maybe 20 hertz, you know, for instance. 20 hertz, you start to pass the band, you know. And then out to, I don't know, 20 kilohertz, and you roll it off again. And then the frequencies blowing above, you drop off. Well, in a graph, when we do that, and we do frequency, imagine if we took a graph paper and we went 1 hertz, 2 hertz, all the way out to 20 kilohertz, 20,000 hertz. All those little slices you'd have to make in your graph paper. Okay, so... On your graph paper, if you did do that, you slice it all the way out to 20,000 hertz, and then you want to see how it rolls off. You go out to 100,000 hertz so you can watch the frequent, you know, you can watch the amplitude of your signal drop off here and drop off here. Well, at the low frequencies, it'd be really hard to see that, right? Because you'd be going, you know, you'd be slicing all these little things, say 1 hertz, 2 hertz, 3 hertz. So 20 hertz would be real close to your axes. So, you know, on the graph paper, it, it'd go up like this, and then you'd have a nice flat frequency response, right, out to 20 kilohertz, and then it'd roll off. And then it'd roll off really slow. So your graph paper would have to be really wide out there, say 100 kilohertz, to watch it taper off. So that's why we use log, because it compresses things, you know, compresses things. So that way, when you go 0 to 10 hertz, it on your graph paper comes out to here. So now you can watch it come up. But then 10 to 100 hertz, it's compressed to the same distance as 0 to 10 hertz was. So now you only counted, say, 10 hertz out to here. But on your graph paper, from 10 hertz to 100, it's the same distance. From 100 to 1,000, same distance. 1,000 to 10,000, same distance of you know, say an inch for every, uh, you know, decade, right? So on your graph paper, you can actually see that now. Now you can actually see it come up and cross, and then you can watch it go down. And now you don't have to watch it slowly taper off. It just drops down. So th that's the benefit of, gra uh, of, you know, compressing your frequencies on a graph paper. Now, vertically, same thing. I've often said... It's kind of like looking at a city. If you stood back to take a picture of your Uncle Sam standing in front of the Empire State Building, you, you know, you need a wide-angle lens, right? And even then, could you even get it in? Well, let's say you could. You'd see your Uncle Sam right here, maybe the dog's down here, and then the Empire State Building's way up here, so Uncle Sam would look really small in that picture and the dog you wouldn't even be able to see it it'd be, you know it'd be so teeny because you'd have to your picture would be like say the top of the pictures up here Empire State Building's up at the top your Uncle Sam would be way down here you couldn't even make that make him out right so let's say that you compress that right so 10 feet look like an inch a hundred feet look like another inch a thousand feet look like another inch 10,000 feet look like another inch. Now it's all compressed. Now it looks like your Uncle Sam's gigantic standing next to his Empire State Building. But at least you could see the dog. The dog would look gigantic too. And then you have the dog, 
Uncle Sam, and then the Empire State Building. Everything would, you know, you'd be able to see detail and all that stuff, right? So when you have audio signals, your ear can hear, you know, things really small and really loud. And to be able to see those signals, let's say you're going down to, I don't know, say minus 60 dBs to, say, plus 20 or plus 40 dB, you'd be able to see all that stuff in a graph and it makes sense. You know, you'd be able to see detail. Basically, what it comes down to is you can see detail. So, so let's just see what a decibel looks like in math, okay? If you take the log of one, what does that look like? The log of a thousand, what does that look like? Let's, let's take a look at that. All right, so let's just take a look at what logs look like. So let's do the log of one. So right here, log base 10, one. Okay, let's do 10. One, let's try 100. Two, you guys might start seeing a pattern here. Log of 1,000, three. So essentially, we're just counting how many zeros we have. So let's do 10,000. There's 10, one, two, three. So we have four zeros, log, okay? So we're just counting how many zeros. So. All right, so now, often when we're doing voltage, and I'm gonna show you some equations in a minute uh, to show you where this comes from. But for now, you know, we, we can just kind of, once we understand where it comes from, what I'll show you in a moment, uh, just knowing the voltage and current is 20 times the log of voltage or current, whatever the number is. So just remember that. When it's power, it'd be 10 times the log. But often when we're graphing, we're graphing voltage or current. Usually voltage, you know. So let's just take a look at this. Log of 1, again, was 0, right? So 20 times 0 is 0 dBs. Decibels, right? Bells. So decibels. So small d and b for, you know, the guy's name that he got credit for coming up with this. So bells. All right. So remember the log of 10 was 1, right? It's basically you count how many zeros. So 20 times 1 is 20. Two zeros, 20 times 2 is 40. Three zeros, 20 times 3 is 60. So when you think about it that way, it makes it really easy when you look at a graph. You go, wow, that's 80 dBs. Now, again, usually we start off at a reference point at 0 dBs and we go down. But uh, you can also go up. You can say, well, oh, we had a gain of 80 dBs. Or you can say we filtered it and we attenuated the signal by 80 dBs. So it's the same thing, you know. It just depends on where you want to start from. Are you counting up or counting down? Did you go climb 10 stairs up or did you climb 10 stairs down? It's still 10 stairs. It's just down, we put a minus sign in front of it. It's negative. We went down from where we were. And if we go up, we usually put plus. So same with the graph paper. We, we'll start off with uh, 0 dBs. Just say that's our reference point. Now, a lot of times it would be 1 volt would be 0 dBs. It's just a reference point. So, 80 dBs. Look at that. 10,000 times. So, if you had a signal 1 volt and you had some noise, and when we do our FFT plots... So this, this works for our FFT stuff too. It makes, maybe helps make you understand how the FFT plots look. So we make our FFT plots. We look at that. We see all these spikes and we go, wow, look at those spikes. And they're, oh, 40, 60 dB. That kind of, usually they're kind of there because of our 8-bit scopes. But you're bouncing around here and you're like, wow, look, that's a lot of noise. But now remember... That's a hundred times less than one volt, or a thousand times less than one volt. So that noise down here is pretty small. 
So another thing that I just want to kind of throw out there for sound, just to kind of help us put this stuff together in our head. If you go from 10 dB to 100 dB, if you're going plus, then you're increasing the sound by uh, 10 times. Okay, so that's another vanilla log. That's why if even if you maybe don't know it on your amplifiers when you have that volume control it's not a linear control like if you looked at the voltage that you're controlling it's not linear it's logarithmic okay it's a log uh, potentiometer so yeah just to let you know that so let's say if it's a 1 to 10k pot you might have one volt here and um, you'd be ten thousandths of a volt down here so yeah it's it's that's what I mean about the sen uh, sensitivity of your hearing and and the amplification so uh, log is just a important thing to help us compress things so we can visualize it and it's the way our senses work anyway so they work in a logarithmic fashion so all right so now let me explain where the 20 comes from for volts and current and why we use 10 for um, watts. And the other important thing is that 3 dB thing, right? There's that 3 dB factor. When we're plotting grass and we're like, oh, where's the 3 dB point? Um, that's often a confusion point. That's the half power point. Now, if you're looking at voltage explicitly, yeah, it's not half when we say half power, it's not half the voltage, it's half the power. So let me explain that, okay? Okay, so what if we have three dBs, okay? So we have three, okay? And we're, it's a negative because in a filter we're dropping three dBs. So we drop three dBs, okay? Now if we're doing voltage, it's 20 times a log of the voltage is equal to minus 3 dB drop. So uh, doing this equation in reverse, we go 20 divide and then the anti-log, which is 10 to the X. And we get 0 0.707. That number looks familiar probably. Okay, now let's just say we have current. So voltage times current is power. So same thing, it's 3 dBs down, so 3 minus, and we divide that by 20, and we take the anti-log. Exact same number, because same math. So now it's voltage times current at the 3 dB point. So we multiply those together, and we get 0.501, so 0.5, so half power point. Okay, now let's just say we're doing half power instead. So powers divide by 10. So let's go 3. It's minus 3 dB, right? So now let's divide that by 10. 10 divide and anti-log. And look at that. So there you go. Half power point, 3 dB. All right, guys, so let me just pull up the board here again. Hope you can see that. So, one bell is equal to 10 decibels. Now, yeah, we're not used to using decibels a lot. We're used to using kilos and megas and millis and micros and nanos and picos. But there's also the deci, the tenth. So, if you have a tenth of a bell, you got to go 10 times that seems kind of crazy right but we we like to use decibels so it's 10 times this for electronics we end up using 10 times or 20 times a lot so 10 times deci we're back to a bell and that's what a bell is okay so another thing a math thing okay when you're taking the log of some number anything and it's got a power to it well, it's the same thing as if you take the power and move it over here, go two times log of V. Because what this really is, 
is the log of V plus the log of V again. So if you're taking the log of V twice, it's just two log of Vs. Just a little math here. I mean, yeah, you don't have to be a math major. It's just kind of understand where this thing comes from. So you can just use it. 10 times log of power or 20 times log of volts or 20 times log of current. All right, so let's say we're taking the gain. You know, we're doing our, our Bode plot and we're volts out divided by volts in. So it's V squared. Now, you know, I kind of messed up here. Hold on a sec. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I kind of left it off. So we, we got to remember this is power. It's supposed to be power, right? So when we go power divided by power, power out divided by power in, it's V squared divided by R. That's Ohm's law for power. Well, that's the power law. So uh, V squared, but then R just cancels in the equation. So we just end up with V squared out divided by V squared in. Well, now this power rule works the same way. We can put a parentheses around here, put a power out here, and put the two over here. So we end up with two times the log of V out over V in. All right? So just using this, this uh, guy here to work out this equation. All right, but now we're gonna go decibels. So we gotta go 10 times this. So 10 times all that. So 10 times two is 20. So that's where the 20 comes from when we're doing voltage. So we're plotting voltage is 20 times the gain. Volts out divided by volts in. 20 times the log of the gain, okay? So that's where all that comes from. <laughs> all right, so that's why we use log for vertical and for frequency. I kind of explained that too, right? So hopefully that makes sense and let me know what you guys think. A thumbs up the video really helps YouTube analytics. I appreciate it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. I know most of you guys aren't subscribers, but if you don't mind subscribing, that'd be awesome. Um, thanks for watching and let me know what you guys think. I'm going to do a follow-up video on logs a little bit later, but I, I hope this helped enough so you understand when we're looking at the Bode diagrams or even FFTs, you know, why we're using logarithms okay so you know so i hope that makes sense and yeah there we go all right hey thanks for watching and i want to give two thumbs up to the patreons appreciate you guys i got a small group of patrons you can always become a patreon for as little as a dollar a month it helps support the channel and all that links are down below i appreciate it guys and a hey, happy new year's and hope this is going to be a great year. Well, I know it's going to be a great year. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.